not optional, like paying taxes, to put it really crass, like we all go to the toilet, we have to pay taxes, we have to breathe, three things that we have to do in life. And whenever I ask that question, most people go, they think that drinking water is the most important thing. They think that's the thing that we need to do. It's, it's not breathing is usually the first option. That was Jules Katia, and you're landed on the Me and My Health Up podcast. I'm your host, Anthony Harcher. I'm a clinical nutritionist and lifestyle medicine specialist. The purpose of this podcast is to enhance and enlighten your well-being. And today we have Jules on the show to do that for you. She is a coach working in the modalities of breathwork, Reiki, mindfulness, business and keynote speaking, and also beauty. Jules shares her insights and tools on how to unplug from your mind noise to connect back to you to create internal expansion and to mindfully breathe day to day. So without much further ado, I'd love to welcome you into this, this discussion I'm having with Jules. Welcome on the Me and My Health Up podcast. How are you, Jules? I am really good, thank you, Anthony. How are you? Fantastic. So great to have you on the show. I am very excited to be speaking to a breathwork expert. We all, we, we all breathe every day and mm -hmm. it's something that we take for granted. And mm. as I'm sure you'll short, share with us, Jules, that so many of us aren't breathing correctly. correctly. So yep. we will delve into that and correct that and help people with that. Mm. But before we start with, um, uh, you know, I'd love to start with my starting question, which is how you have arrived at what you're doing today. Oh, that's an excellent question, isn't it? And you're so correct, Anthony. Breathing is, we all do it. It is not optional. Um, thank you so much for having me on today. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to be here. I came about what I do now. It, there's a lot of layers to it, so let's shorten that. So I worked in the corporate world for a really long time. Um, I started my career out in hospitality and, and went off into PR and communications, went off into corporate. Um, have always managed quite large teams and been in coaching environments and worked with teams that are often interacting with one another. So quite high pressure and a lot of uh, the term I know now and I use now is holding space for other humans. And, you know, I had my own journey of a childhood um, where, you know, I had challenges that came up along the way and, um, you know, didn't live at home from a very young age and had done all of the talk therapy. You name it, I've done it. Uh, psychotherapy, psychology, psychiatry, uh, every different type of kinesiology, all of that. And I came about a few years ago where uh, an acquaintance of mine actually said to me, have you ever tried breath work? And I was like, well, yeah, like, you know, in the meditation breathing apps, I've done a bit of Wim Hof, like we all have, I think. Uh, and, you know, I, I was doing an exercise at the time in the mornings that my kinesiologist had set up for me where I just I'd get up and do some breathing but really intentional listening to a very specific um, type of music as well. And I was like, well, yeah. And then she said, breath work, go, like, you know, in a very conscious way. And I said, well, no, no, I've not done that. And she said it might be ideal for, you know, for you to explore it was a suggestion at the time for actually my husband. And so I came about this beautiful shaman breathwork guru whose name's Davidson. He also has a support care agency across Australia, primarily based in Sydney and in Queensland. And I messaged him on Instagram and she said he might not message you back. He did instantly. And he said, yeah, let's have a call. And so I was like, okay. We had... I think we spoke for nearly like two, two and a half hours. And he and I collectively decided for him that it should be me that actually is going to do the breathwork session. You know, at the time, you know, things were quite high stress in our house. Uh, my daughter's on the spectrum. She has a multiple diagnosis. She's highly functioning to the point where most people don't even, even see it, which can be quite difficult in today's society. There's a lot of judgment that comes with that. And there's a lot of behavioural issues that go along with her. And so we're seeing therapists, speech therapists, psychologists, a behavioural management team for our family, and I'm the one that's doing it all. I'm the primary caregiver. 
I'm the one in the hut holding space. I'm the one that's setting the, the boundaries and rules. So when I spoke to Davidson, he's like, you're the one that's doing it all. You should be having this, not your husband, not anyone else. So I, he said, he gave me some homework, which I'm not going to say on here. Um, it's a little bit left of field. I am happy to answer that question to anyone privately if they want to reach out to me, but not in a group format. I did the homework. Uh, and then a couple of days later, it had been a really, really tough morning, particularly um, with my daughter and her father at the time, I, you know, going through something at the time. And so I messaged him and he said, yeah, sure, come, come this afternoon at four o'clock. And I was like, oh, okay, I don't know if I'm ready for this. And the the uncomfortability came up. And I I called my coach at the time and his wife was in the car actually with him and you know, they've done everything they now live in fire and and they were like just go like it's you're gonna love it just lean in and I don't know the person that walked in to that house that day the person that walked in to the person that walked out I think three hours later it was is completely different uh to the point that yeah my family when I got home were like what have you been doing because I was responding differently, I actually annoyed them because I got home and, and put myself first automatically. And it's something that I have I have I have juggled as a as a wife, as a mother, as a friend, the type of human that I am, I put others first. And I'm working at a lot better capacity now with me. But in that moment I went home and I actually had a shower. I didn't go and put the washing on, I didn't go and do things for them. I went and had a shower. And that breathwork experience for me, uh, Davidson met me and he actually had taken a bit of a step back where he was like, you have a lot of healing energy. Has anybody ever told you that? Like, you, I, I feel really held being with you. And he had to take a moment to collect his own energy to then hold space for me. Now, that breathwork session you know, isn't something that I do every single day. It's not what I take my clients through every day. It's It was a full holotropic, um, conscious, connected, oral breath experience. There was a lot going on. There was a lot of energy in the room, him being a shaman as well, um, and having many modalities he's qualified in. There was a lot going on. But I worked through a lot in that period of time. I started a 12-week container with him. And it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my life. However, the amount of healing that I did in that time that I did for myself through breathing and the amount of things that came up for me and the amount of stages of life that I worked through from my, my childhood, my teenage years, my early adulthood, giving birth, you name it. And throughout that time, I... I was, you know, I was working in a, a bit of a different, I was working in a coaching environment. Um, I'm also a makeup artist, which I still do 30, 40% of the time. Once again, it's still holding space. So, you know, my clients, I take them through a breath when they sit down. A lot of my clientele are very, very busy and they're in the media and they are rushed. They're reading notes and scripts on, on their phone whilst I'm doing their makeup. So it's a lot of people go, oh, well, how is that holding space? It's a lot more holding space than, than what people realise. So. Davidson and I, and I at that time had some very big conversations about what I was doing in my world. Uh, I had a very detailed coaching container at the time as well. And I was really working on myself. And throughout that time, I was already a coach, uh, a qualified coach through different modalities and psychotherapy as well as one of those. Uh, Davidson was like, you need to be doing this, you need to be doing breath work. So I engaged in training. I've done many certifications now, and that was, what, three years ago? And now I've been able to incorporate it back into the corporate world. Uh, a lot of my clients are CEOs, uh, often majority male as well. Uh, like my over 40 clientele are male, majority of them, probably 70%. And to full disclaimer, they're on their second and third wives, uh, live very, very high stressful environments uh, and have realised that they need to come back to themselves because true healing happens 
when you are connected from your mind to your heart and to your body. And I didn't know what it was truly like to be in my body until I started conscious breath work. And even today, when I feel a bit frustrated or my heart's racing, it's because I need to come back to my breath. And I've got things that are coming up for me or I'm, in, I, I'm a bit annoyed about some things or I've got other people's energy, it's, it's coming back to the breath. And it sounds really woo-woo, it's so not. Breathing is not optional, like paying taxes. To put it really crass, like we all go to the toilet, we have to pay taxes, we have to breathe. Three things that we have to do in life. And whenever I ask that question, most people go, they think that drinking water is the most important thing. They think that's the thing that we need to do. It's, it's not breathing is usually the first option. So especially over the last six months, I feel like I've you know, entered a world where, you know, it's not about blowing people's roofs off and laying them down and what's having a, you know, a somatic experience because I am uh, trauma informed and somatic informed. Uh, in my breathwork styles, but there's thousands of types of breathwork. And generally, the best healing type of breath is learning how to breathe properly and in and out of your nose. And I can 100% hand on heart, most of us are not doing it properly, even if we think we are. What a story. Incredible. I was just thinking, what should I ask you next? There's so much, there's so many places where we could go. Totally. My, yeah, so my, my thinking is, is, is certainly starting with what is breath work? Because for me, like we've, I, I guess you've mentioned breath work a lot. And unless we define what breath work is, people are going to assume something. And what they're assuming is probably not correct. So let's start with what is breath work? Okay, so I'm going to keep this really, really simple. It is consciously moving energy and the different types of oxygen through our body it is a way for us to release anxiety it is a way for us to completely come back into our bodies it is a way for us to lose weight there's some big studies and i know you and i had a brief conversation about that and i'm sure you're going to ask me about that question and i'm I'm ready for that one today. It is a way for you to feel completely calm. It is a way for you to work with your mental health. There are some huge studies at the moment, and I think I actually listened to something that you were talking about the other day about uh, like medications and anxiety and, and ADHD. And honestly, a lot of my clients who you know, are on the spectrum, and I, I live in a house with people that are on the spectrum, my best friends are, it's coming back to your breath. Being conscious with how you're using your energy, it will reduce the amount of water you need to drink. I used to drink four to five litres of water a day and now I only really need to drink about two maximum. Uh, but I was always thirsty. It will help you sleep better. Sleep apnea, always sleeping problems, um, insomnia issues, uh, even just the way you digest your food, digestion is a huge one as well. But in your stress levels, our day to day, like when we're feeling a bit stressed, what's the what's the first thing that we feel when we're stressed? Our respiratory rate. We we you know, we start breathing. You know, panting. <laughs> mm, <laughs> like a, yeah, like a yeah. like a dog. Yeah, <laughs> so. a hundred a hundred percent. And how are we taught to breathe when we run? That with our mouth like it's mouth breathing isn't it it's yeah, yeah. it's which yeah. is actually well, uh, incorrect I, I just wanted to say jules that we're never actually taught how to breathe like like we yeah. we come into the world you know we come into the world with a breath and we leave the world with our last breath but in between no one's there other than jules and yeah there's a few others but uh, yeah. <laughs> jules is the best that but uh there's no one there to guide us and teach us and teach around a, a, a thing that we do every well you know depending on how how much you breathe per minute but it's it's something that you do cyclic you know in order to mm. to what's well, life isn't it it's it, it's it's without breathing where we aren't alive so um 
Yeah, it's, a, it's so true. It's incredible. Yeah. I realized years ago I had a yoga instructor. I'd never done yoga like consistently. I would do it when I would go overseas. I would do it when I would like go down the coast or up the coast. Like, you know, it was a way of like when I was on holidays type thing, like of coming back and being connected. I started doing yoga consistently about five years ago. And uh, my yoga instructor is actually a kinesiologist as well. And she was absolutely incredible. Uh, and she's, she now lives in Perth with her family. And she was just magical. I love doing yoga with her and one of her colleagues. She came to me after my second session. She was like, do you know how you breathe? And I said, no. And I'm a chronic asthmatic. It's something that I've deliberately left out until now. I am not a chronic asthmatic anymore. I am an asthmatic. I would not say I'm a chronic asthmatic at, at all anymore because of my breathing. And it is my aim to be able to reduce the preventatives that I use. And I've got a goal of about 12 months of that. But she said, do you know how you breathe? And I said, no. And she said, you breathe in and out of your mouth. And I was like, oh. And she says, don't make it wrong. Because I went to make it wrong and that's what we do. We make things wrong all the time because we're not taught how to breathe. And this is why it's becoming a big platform for schools and for environments around we're teaching mindfulness programs and wellness and anxiety, but are we teaching our children, our next generations, how to breathe? No, we're not. And that's what helps reduce anxiety. That's what helps you be connected back to your body. So when she taught me how to breathe in yoga, I started being very conscious about breathing in and out of my nose and only breathing in through my nose and out of my mouth when I was going into certain positions in yoga or in Pilates. And to be honest, now I generally ignore what the instructor says when I'm in Pilates now. Although my Pilates instructor, she's absolutely incredible and she loves breath work and you know she is all about what works for you. But when she says breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth, seven times out of ten, I don't do it because I actually don't want to waste my energy. I don't want to dehydrate myself. We're all breathing too much. So that's what the myth, that's one probably the first myth around breath work, is that we need to be laying down, doing this big Wim Hof type style breathing. And don't get me wrong, Wim Hof's incredible. And there's been, I've done training with one of, you know, one of his former instructors, who's absolutely amazing. But that's not the only breath style that we should be doing. And teaching us how to breathe is something I'm extremely passionate about because even my best friend this morning, she sent me a text message and she's just a bit stressed, she's got a lot going on, you know, multiple businesses and children. And I have to stop myself from saying, like, let's, let's do a breathing technique because she knows and sometimes she just needs me to actually go, are you okay? Like, how can I help? Do you want to vent? But she's also the first person to go, right, I'm going to breathe when she gets, before she gets on stage and performs, uh, sorry, presents to an audience. She's a, a top financial advisor in, in Australia and she talks about breath work all the time and she's, you know, done breath work sessions with me and with my, char- with my mentor, Davidson. But we are not, yeah, taught how to breathe and it used to be something that was so triggering for me when someone would be like, just take a breath, calm down which we still shouldn't be saying to someone who's stressed, by the way. You should not say that. But instead, I would encourage you, Anthony, your family, you know, we talked a little bit about your children and we'll definitely get to some techniques as well. We'll do a technique for everyone at the end that they can come back in and, and teach them how to do it because that's what I'm about getting you to do is walk away knowing how to breathe better. And, you know, it shouldn't. I don't want people have to have to come and see me every week. People will sign up for... For 12 weeks and then they'll have check-in sessions and the same as I do with my mentors like I'm a Reiki practitioner as well and you know my Reiki master I will have a check-in session with her every six weeks I have physio I have chiro out we've got the same chiropractor we all know how magical um, Dr. Yuan McMillan is and it's all about what works for us of coming back to our body and the energy that goes around that so breathing less overall a minute helps us calm instead of saying someone take a breath and it's the not what we say it's how we say it. and I talk a lot about this with my clients and on my platforms and especially in keynote sp- speaking it's like actually Anthony let's just take a breath right now like let's breathe in through the nose and out through the nose 
and it's like notice the difference of how that feels even just in your heart space and you instantly went to close your eyes and so do I and there are you know mouth breathing techniques that we can we can we can do that can definitely shift energy a bit quicker especially if we're feeling a bit stagnant or perhaps we've just had too much for a big day you know we've had back-to-back podcasts or back-to-back clients or we've been go 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 in meetings and all of a sudden you're like hang on I don't know whether I'm hungry thirsty where I'm at I might need to do a quick breath flow which could be in through the nose and out through the mouth for a couple of minutes you could do them at the traffic lights i i do it all the time when i'm out in public at a lift it's being conscious of our breath and it is something where i might i want you to learn some techniques perhaps have a few sessions with me and then i would love not to ever see you again i would love to see you but it would be that the next time i see you that you're like oh my goodness i've learned this and that really helped and I want to learn about how to do what we talked about the other day, my baseline score, like my pulse, which is your capacity to breathe. And breathing is a way for you to heal. And when you say it that simply, isn't it pretty magical? Isn't it up to us, ourselves? And talk therapy is great. But like even my own, like, you know, I see a psychotherapist every now and again. But even she says, you know, she's like, Jules, you don't, it's just validation that you're here. You know what you're doing. So it's coming back to ourselves and being connected with us. And that is just breathing. Yeah. I was just thinking when you mentioned that breathing as therapy, I've never really saw it as a, as a therapeutic agent, uh, you know, like, mm-hmm. I guess in the past, certainly in the past and it's only, I guess, through meeting people like yourself and becoming more familiar with the published scientific literature is that you know, breathing is therapy in itself. Uh, so mm-hmm. uh, what I'm really keen to explore with you now is you mentioned, obviously, the importance of nose breathing and not breathing th- you know, through the mouth primarily. Now, what's the other foundations to good breathing? Like, what? how do we set ourselves up? So maybe you start with, how do people know if they're mouth breathing? What's the test to test it? You know, it's a test for mouth breathing. And then from there, how do we then get a good breath? Like what are those core foundations to a good breath? Great. So we're going to do an exercise then because, and that's one we were talking about when we caught up last, is, is doing our pulse and our baseline score. So the best way to, t- to, to learn if you are mouth breathing is are you – asking yourself a couple of questions first. Are you thirsty when you wake up? Do you need to have a glass of water beside the bed? Three beautiful techniques. Fantastic questions. Cause I'm thinking back, like I was a bit like you, I used to consume a lot of water (laughs) and, and then I went into mouth taping and the mouth tapings helped me a lot, uh, which, you know, I I find a bit irritating at times, but uh, it's helped me a lot around Uh, And particularly what I noticed at night was not going to the toilet as frequently. Uh, So you just took the words out of my mouth, mouth taking and going to the toilet. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, even for me, like I'm drinking a lot of water today. I have been extremely sick. But what I've even noticed is that I used to drink cold sparkling water. But when I was, when I'm, because I've been so sick, I've not wanted anything cold at all. I've only wanted things at a room temperature. But I don't really drink anything other than water. I will have a coffee and, you know, I, I, I will drink alcohol from time to time, but I don't, I don't drink anything else. Like I'll drink tea during winter, but the dehydration aspect of mouth breathing is huge. And when you start mouth taping, you'll notice some huge difference of the way you just even feel when you wake in the morning. So another question for people is that if they don't, want to jump into mouth taping. Now there's lots of mouth tapes on the market. Um, I would be careful about what mouth tape you use because a lot of them aren't formulated um, for the mouth. They're just like normal tape that we use on wrapping a present. So I would look into what you you know are using and, and making sure it's formulated. There's, it's usually the two strips that are, that are the best. But I would ask yourself, when you're waking in the morning and you're not mouth taping, Are you feeling like you've got a bit of a grab in the middle of your chest as well? Are you feeling a bit, how would you rate your energy levels out of 10? Were you dreaming? Do you remember? 
track what times you wake up over like over the course of the night as well and so when you come into the daytime when we're talking do you put the tongue to the roof of your mouth in between words do you know how to do that how often do you swallow they're the key signs that when you're mouth breathing you won't even be aware of any of the things that i've just asked and even when we're talking like this when i'm pausing i notice myself and i notice you and i've noticed you have become more conscious of it since we've been talking and so if you're not aware of what you're doing which to be honest most of us are not if we're mouth breathing talk to someone else watch their mouth you can tell when they put the tongue through the roof of their mouth because we often mirror other people and I can 100% out, like hand on heart say that 90% of our population are mouth breathing unless you are in the field of breath work as a coach or a lot of personal trainers definitely don't mouth breathe like fitness flight instructors yoga instructors but coming back to your baseline score this is what we were talking about and so this is about checking your capacity to breathe and it involves getting up in the morning takes a, take seven days to create a habit getting up in the morning don't reach for your phone don't open it keep it on do not disturb no coffee have some water go to the toilet sit down or even sit at your desk i like to sit at the desk and and do this in front of my actual computer i keep the spreadsheet open and you find your pulse for 30 seconds you count the amount of beats put the timer on for 30 seconds count that in your head double that score that is your pulse for that time and then you're going to do a capacity breath and i'm going to demonstrate it now unless you're a breath coach or a deep sea diver your breath score is going to be about capacity probably about under 15. when you're sitting there and doing your pulse you're going to sit there and lightly breathe you're not going to over breathe you're not going to under breathe all in and out of your nose going to keep your mouth closed you're not going to talk to anyone you're going to take a couple of minutes and you're not going to be deep breathing deeply but you're not going to be breathing lightly you're just going to breathe and do this for a couple of minutes then you're going to take a, a deep you're going to take a breath not a deep breath but a conscious breath in through your nose for five and out of your nose for five and you're going to blow all the way air out and you're going to clasp your fingers over your nose and you're going to hold your breath in that moment you're going to count until you feel the need to breathe so you're going to sit there tongue through your mouth and hold you might feel the desire to swallow you might feel a flutter at the back of your collarbones shoulder blades you might feel it up in your chest and i promise you that you're going to feel it before you think i watched someone do it yesterday and her mouth started to twitch and i said you're breathing and she's like, oh, I'm like, yeah, that's the desire to breathe. That number is going to be your capacity score. Now, I'll have full disclosure right now. I was sitting at about a 15 for a few weeks, and then I got extremely sick a few weeks ago, and I've been back to a seven or an eight most days. I would do this at first thing when you wake, and then nighttime as well. I do it, try and do it around six or seven. Some people do it, some of my clients do it before bed. But this is your capacity to breathe and testing what it's like and how long you can hold your breath for now it's not a competition it is with yourself your own ego it's your number and i've got a client that i've been seeing weekly and she's been doing this for the last month and doing it every single day she does it in the morning and she does it now does it in the middle of the day and does it at night and then we're going to we're taking her through a breath retraining exercise as of this saturday when i see her where she is then doing it where she takes that score and then she goes back to three minutes of just breathing air coming in and out not barely breathing not overly breathing and then she does the test again breathing through her nose out through her nose holds it that is breath retraining that is seeing what the capacity is and there's many other retraining exercises but that is one i've learned recently um with breathless expeditions and that is one of the biggest telltales of what your capacity is and then we can teach you how to do breathing exercises and there's one we'll do at the end that is called a coherence breath everyone talks about it but not enough of us are doing it and even for me whilst being sick the last few weeks and for my daughter as well who's been extremely sick 
that has been the breath that I have been coming back to. And is that coherent breathing? Is that the one that people should be doing on a regular basis? Like it, what? what's yeah. the, yeah. Yes, 100% happening. Perfect. Coherence breathing, getting you to breathe six breaths. And when I say that to most people, they're like, what? Only six? And it's breathing in through your nose for five, out through your nose for five. And this is the best way to regulate your central nervous system. And that is what breathing does. Activating the parasympathetic, calming down the sympathetic in a very conscious way and connecting all of our organs back to our breath because it comes back to blood flow, oxygen. And how often would you recommend doing this throughout the day? Like is there a certain number of number of cycles or, you know, different mm. points? That, yeah, yeah. I would we all have the best intentions with habits. We're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do that all the time. Do it once a day. I do it multiple times a day because it's a really good way to connect back into the body. If you're feeling frustrated, it's really amazing to do that. But for somebody that's been through an accident or some deep trauma, like recently, um, or they're just feeling constantly anxious and they're on anxiety meds or they're on you know other things like for um, mental health conditions, etc. I would be bringing them back the coherence breath and do it as often as you feel you need. But if you're struggling to go to sleep, coming back to that, there's another breathwork technique we can, I'm going to teach you at the end that um, helps for everything, including your daughter's hiccups. Um, and it's great. I even did it last night because I've been struggling to go to sleep at night because my, my breathing has not been great because of how sick I've been and what my lungs are doing and, antibiotics and all the vitamins I've been taking my body's like what's going on with you but yeah adding for once a day once a day so and up it if you need to do it as often as you like but have the intention of once a day twice a day do it before you go to bed do it with the kids and so that's breathing in through the nose five seconds out through the nose for five seconds for three minutes was it uh you can oh. do it for three minutes but doing that for a minute of making sure you only got six breaths a minute. And I don't really, I'm not a big meditator. I rather listen to, I rather do a breathing exercise or I rather listen to like the Jay Shetty on the car map. But people go, oh, I can't meditate. I'm like, well then do a breathing exercise because it's the same thing because you're just, all you're thinking about is your breathing. Whereas Meditating, you know, let the thoughts come, let the thoughts go. But we get in our head and the to-do list gets too much. When you're breathing, you're just thinking about, you're counting your breath. So it's really hard to think about something else, isn't it, when you're just thinking about your breath. And my own daughter now, like if I had the capacity, she would lay down and do a breath session for me, with me every day. She loves it. And... I will do some mouth breathing with her, but she is so relaxed by the end. And she gets a little bit embarrassed and she's like, she starts laughing or she'll cry. She's like, why am I crying? I'm like energy, you're releasing. Pretty wow. cool. Yeah, absolutely. It's game changing. So as you were alluding to before, my daughter gets hiccups on a regular, oh, I don't know, sort of spir sporadic, probably, you know, based on her stress levels. <laughs> and, uh, mm. and when she gets them, she gets really frustrated because they just hang around, hang around, hang around. And so she's looking certainly for ways to get rid of the hiccups or, uh, mm. and, and, you know, she's tried various things. And you shared that uh, you have an exercise that you can do for hiccups, <laughs> which would be great. And as you said, it's also helpful for anyone that feels really stressed in the moment uh, and they want to calm themselves down, right? This is sort of. Mm. Uh, so the fact that she's got hiccups and it's usually when she's stressed or anxious, I would say she's a mouth breather, one of the biggest signs, because everything's getting caught up in her digestive system, um, probably in and out of her diaphragm, there's pockets of air that are getting built up and that's her body's stress release. And so her body is telling her to slow down, to breathe. So hiccups and stress are very, very common. Um, it's the four, seven, eight technique. 
So it's breathing in through the nose for four. It's holding for seven at the top and breathing out of the nose for eight. So breathing in for four, hold for seven at the top, breathe out for eight. This is an excellent way to go to sleep at night. I did this last night actually. And it did really help me. I, I was able to go to sleep before midnight last night, which I haven't done in nearly two and a half weeks. And I usually am asleep by like 9.45. Um, and I've retrained my sleep as well. But not being able to breathe as well and nighttime air. But the four, seven, eight style is great for. And you can instantly feel it. You're like, oh, I can instantly feel my diaphragm calm. I would also say that she is breathing from her chest and not her diaphragm or her belly. So the coherence breath, so coming back to the breathing in for five, out for five, six breaths a minute, I would be getting her to do that daily as well. So if the hiccups are really bad, four, seven, eight. So in for four, hold for seven at the top, out for eight. But overall, in terms of breath retraining, I would do the coherence breath. In for five, out for five, six breaths, just for a minute. And she can do that when she's at school. No one's going to watch her. No one's going to see what she's doing. She's just going to be, and breathing in, belly rises. Breathing out, belly falls. Like really being conscious with that. Breathing in, belly rises. Breathing out, belly falls. And I can hand on heart tell you that within a week of her doing those two exercises daily, the hiccups will reduce. But Fantastic. we're all going to feel stressed. Yeah, we're all going to feel stressed. It's just how we how we deal with it. And for me, when I used to feel stressed, I would. It's the stories we go into. We're stressed. We make it wrong, or we blame somebody else. I generally blame myself. That's just how I am as a human. I will look within first. But now it's just taking myself to a breath exercise or connecting back to nature. Even if you're just looking outside, sitting there and breathing in and out of your nose if you can't go outside but you know get some sunshine have you had have you had a walk have you exercise all the things that get us back to breathing consciously and the and the non-negotiables that go with that as well but mouth taping is one of the best things at night especially for someone also that has hiccups is there a particular mouth tape that you recommend? Because you said there's a lot of rubbish or ones that just uh, just tape. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, uh, I now use, and this is the one that I will give to clients as well, it is the one by Breathless Expeditions, Johannes. Um, it's it, it's the, been a game changer. I've been mouth taping for a long time, and it's the single strips. So we can pop it in the show notes, but, yeah. You can you can get it off the Breathless Expeditions website. It's Fantastic. Formulated for daily, so you're not taking it off a big roll like a lot of them are, or you're not cutting it. It's it's been um, one of my clients was mouth taking already, and she's like, "This has been way better." And I'm, you know, a skin coach, beauty coach, so I'm thinking about people's skin and irritations. Winter, we're all got drier skin, you know, out in and out of, you know, hot to cold. Our heating systems are not so great here in Australia. Uh, we need to make sure we're taking care of our skin. So, but yeah, we can pop that in the show notes. That's really good. Thank you, Jules. And the, the other one I, I thought was interesting, I will certainly got my attention, Halotropic, Halotropic. Uh, and so I'm thinking, I'd love to know what that is. And if you could just share some insight around that. Mm. So that's holotropic, so H-O-L-O, tropic, T-R-O-P-I-C, holotropic. Um, that is a technique around releasing energy, um, you know, being very conscious with our mouth breathing. So it is a Wim Hof style breathing. But Wim Hof, which I'll demonstrate a little bit now, you know, Wim Hof's very, <sighs> I haven't done that for a little while. My chest is feeling that. But it's more being, you know, opening your jaw. Holotropic is taking you through a journey, an experience of mouth breathing. A lot of people like to do these experiences by themselves on apps. It is not something I would be advising or suggesting uh, as I have a few, it's, it would, you know, void my insurances. Um, and I have a few, you know, qualifications. So I always come back with breath work, come back to my coaching qualifications as well around um, I don't advise my clients i give perspective i give suggestions um with breathwork i do advise 
But holotropic is ensuring that we're keeping our mouth actually at the same opening and going like it's opening it wider than what you expect it to be. And when I'm doing a breath session with you or even in a group scenario, I'm, I'm coming around and adjusting your jaw because we don't want you walking away with a sore jaw at the end and we don't want you actually wasting your breath. Um, and holotropic is about getting you into an altered state because that's where people who think or who are unsure what breath work is, there's a big perception that it's so woo-woo. It's like, oh, you're going to lay down. You're going to do it for 90 minutes. It's mouth breathing. Oh, let's get the energy out. Let's get your demons out. And, you know, that holotropic can do that definitely. And I have had those experiences and a lot of people judge me, which I love now. I think it's amazing when they judge because they're like, oh, you don't look like a breathwork coach. I'm like, well, what does a breathwork coach look like? You know, what does a naturopath look like? What does a doctor look like? You know what I mean? Like, what does a nutritionist look like? But, you know, I'm trained in many different types of breathwork and holotropic is something that I can do, but it's coming back to the trauma-informed style of that. And holotropic is, is endeavouring to take you on a journey to, you know, release. Uh, it's having an intention often before you go in, but cannot, like 100%, every time I've ever gone into a breathwork experience, I just recently, I've been doing a few across the retreat, and I was like, I'm fine, I'm good. I don't want to do, I don't want to breathe. Like when I say I don't want to breathe, it's like I don't want to lay down and have someone hold space for me and be touched and whatever. You know, I, I've, I've had everything come up this weekend. I'm good. <laughs> I lay down. And I actually had an asthma, also an asthma attack in that. I was very held and it was very safe and people, everyone was qualified. But I'm glad I did because I could breathe a lot better. And the things that I had come up, I've never had come up in terms of my thoughts. And breath work is getting you out of your head and connecting you back into your, into your body because we make excuses for this. And our brain is an excellent tool. We learn with it. It is so beautiful. It does amazing things, but it was created last. Our heart was created first. So why do we listen to our brain first? However, breath work is your ability to then connect back to the body and work with things that might come up in an altered state. But that almost gets a bit too woo-woo, so I don't want to go too much into that. But it's something I definitely do with my clients when they need it. And it is something that, like, I had a, a, a good friend of mine, a fellow practitioner, message me yesterday. And I come out of a meeting and all I saw on the text was, can you get a, a, um, a get out of jail free card for this event coming up? And I was like, yes, I would love to actually, you know, go through a breathwork experience myself. And it's with someone I've never had an experience with before. So. Yeah, I guess that gives a bit of an explanation on holotropic and the different journeys you can take yourself on. And there's lots of people I know that can do that by themselves, but I would never suggest that ever. It can happen sometimes when you're just doing a breathing exercise and you're a client of mine, um, he's a, he works in finance, he's quite high up in what he does, and he, he goes, I go off with the fairies. So I was like, yeah, that's what you do. But you're actually you're healing and you're working through energy and I guess to loop around because I know we talked about this previously is that I had an injury that Dr. Ewan McMillan from Well 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 helped me with but I had an injury that had occurred from several injuries and I had stopped my physio at the time who's he's an he's incredible doctor had said you're gonna have to stop working as a makeup artist and I was about to have surgery um, I have a condition I still technically have it that's called thoracic outlet syndrome when I started working with Ewan he helped me release a lot of the pain and, and, and energy around it, but it was all because it was coming back to my breath and what he was doing and where he was manipulating or just holding the energy. But now whenever I get that twinge, I went from I had, could barely drive, I couldn't pick up a glass of water without dropping it. I couldn't feel properly in my arm and my hand. I was having very conscious specific physio and massage and Pilates and I was in I was in a nine out of ten in pain. I was taking painkillers and not even properly because I don't like the way I make you feel. When I really started proper breathwork myself, my injury disappeared. I cancelled my surgery. And now when I get the pain, I will go and lay on the roller 
or I sit and do a breath if I can't do that because it's it's stored energy. Our breath can move our energy through our body. And so if you feel like you've got some pain or you feel like your muscles are spasming, you're not breathing properly. None of us are. And I definitely have it in the last few weeks. It's been sick as well. So, Thank you uh, for sharing that remarkable story in terms of how you've turned your health around as a result of the accident and how you've you know been able to manage that and really uh, grow yeah you know, as opposed to it being debilitating you're, you're actually uh, you know thriving with it um, through your breath work and for the listeners how can they best connect with you to get more of this amazing insight and potentially might want to work with you how, how can they best connect with you Jules? Uh, so you can hop on my website to book in a breath session, um, which is my full name, www.julescasher.com.au. Um, you can check my Instagram out. That's also, we can pop that in the show notes. And that's just my name, at Jules Kasher as well. Um, that's C-A-C-H-I-A. Um, it's a bit of a complicated one. Uh, but, yeah, or, you know, my, my details are everywhere there. So, you know, contact me. We can even just do some breath retraining. Uh, it doesn't have to be a full lay down coaching experience. Um, some people come come and see me for a one off session. I actually had a client recently just come to me for one off session, and he'd done heaps of breath work. And his testimonial was insane. And he's high up in finance, and he sat up and he was like, "I have never had an experience like that." And I was like, "I didn't even didn't even push you very hard because I wanted him to come back to you know connecting to his body." And we taught him the exercise that we just taught around baseline school. But, you know, he's now like, let's have a couple more sessions because he was just able to feel much more calmer and centred. So, yeah, it's intended to be the intention that you create around it. And that's what I do now when I'm going into a bigger session for myself or for clients where they're feeling a bit stressed is that make an intention and we can create that and you can hold that in your thoughts going in. However, I can't 100% confirm that that's what you'll work through you'll probably end up working through that and a few other things as well there's that old saying that the best thing, best things in life are often for free and i, I think it might be a song as I well really, and breathing yeah just something we're not taking advantage of and can make such a profound difference in everyone's life if we can breathe properly and it would have a profound difference in society and the way we interact if we're <laughs> a lot calmer as as opposed to in that fight flight mode and you know letting our tempers flare and our anger outbursts and things like that if mm. we were a lot more having control of our breath maybe we could solve a lot of health problems and mental health issues with just teaching people how to breathe at school teaching the children how to breathe so uh i really thank you for your profound insight and sharing that with the listeners today and we'll probably do a part two jules no doubt so uh Thank Very you lovely. once Love again. Oh, Love my absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's been, it's been such a privilege. So thank you. You're very welcome. And to the listeners, uh, please reach out to Jules if you think you or you are now aware that you're mouth breathing based on the questions that Jules proposed and uh, reach out to her, get some assistance and get your breath in order. And that's probably a fantastic step to elevating your health and well-being. Uh, Stay tuned for more insightful episodes of Me and My Health Up. Uh, Please share it with others that you could think that may benefit from hearing this episode that may have a, maybe in pain, they may be struggling with their mental health, their energy levels, or anything that else that Jules has shared. Please share it with them. Get, Get the word out there. We certainly, it's all about helping people elevate their health. And that's what this podcast is all about. So we really appreciate if you could uh, share it with others. And thank you once again, Jules. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Podcast disclaimer. This podcast and any information, advice, opinions or statements within it do not constitute medical, healthcare or professional advice and are provided for general information purposes only. All care is taken in the preparation of the information in this podcast. Connected Wellness Proprietary Limited 
operating under the brand MiMi Health Up does not make any representations or give any warranties about its accuracy, reliability, completeness, or suitability for any particular purpose. This podcast and any information, advice, opinions, or statements within it are not to be used as a substitute for professional, medical, psychological, psychiatric, or any other mental health care or health care in general. Me and My Health Up recommends you seek the advice of a doctor or qualified health provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition. Inform your doctor of any changes that you made to your lifestyle and discuss these with your doctor. Do not disregard medical advice or delay visiting a medical professional because of something you hear in this podcast. This podcast has been carefully prepared on the basis of current information. Changes in circumstances after publication may affect the accuracy of this information. To the maximum extent permitted by the law, Me and My Health Up disclaims any such representations or warranties to the completeness, accuracy, merchantability, or fitness for purpose of this podcast and will not be liable for any expenses, losses, damages, incurred indirect or consequential damages or costs that may be incurred as a result of the information being inaccurate or incomplete in any way and for any reason. No part of this podcast can be reproduced, redistributed, published, copied, or duplicated in a form without prior permission of me and my health up.